Hello and welcome to the Autocar Show. Now that's our standard intro to our standard review, but I fool you. This review is anything but standard. In fact, it's more of an adventure. I'm here in Namibia with the all new Land Rover Defender to drive it for three days over some of the most inhospitable terrain on earth. This promises to be a real epic journey. In fact, the way we got here was pretty epic in a light aircraft landing on a dirt runway. In fact, tarmac is in short supply in this part of the world. So let's hit the road and drive off in what is pure Defender territory. In fact, Land Rover has a long history in Africa and this vast continent is its so-called spiritual home. And it doesn't get more remote than Namibia. It's the second least densely populated country in the world. And you can drive for days without seeing another person. For social distancing, this is probably the best place to be right now. Before driving off, I take a good look at the Defender while it's still clean and mud-free. Has it strayed too far from the original? That's what die-hard fans would say. But quite frankly, I just love the way the new Defender looks. To me, it's a brilliant interpretation of the icon for the 21st century. The upright stance and the very vertical tailgate, which is side opening of course and has a spare tyre mounted on it, and those ultra short overhangs are all design elements that pay homage to the original. Looks the part, doesn't it? There are four engine options. Two 2 liter diesels with 200 horsepower and 240 horsepower and two petrols, a 300 horsepower 2 liter turbo petrol and a 400 horsepower 3 mild hybrid turbo petrol. Now India will only get the 2 liter P300 or the 300 HP petrol variant at a price range from 70 to 86 lakh rupees when it's launched in the second half of the year. A diesel will follow in a couple of months but it's not yet clear which one. All engines are equipped with the familiar 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. There's no manual option at all. My Namibian adventure begins in the small town of Opuo in the northwest corner of this amazing country. So we've left Opuo and headed out toward Van Zyl's camp. Started off in this diesel version which has a 2 liter 240 horsepower engine. We are mainly on gravel roads. It started off with smooth gravel roads and now we are into some pretty rough stuff. The 2-litre diesel impressed with its refinement. It's smooth, quiet and has decent torque. But when in really soft sand, the engine felt a bit bogged down and could do with some more grunt. The one thing the new Defender has in abundance is ground clearance. Quite honestly, everything we've gone over, deep ruts, whatever thrown at it, it just takes it in its stride. However, this rough terrain is what the Defender thrives on and the ride quality is simply outstanding. You really can't feel what's underneath you and the way the adaptive air suspension isolates you from the punishing terrain is incredible. The diesel Defender is fitted with good old steel wheels, but it's the high-profile tyres that give an extra layer of rubber in cushioning shocks. So it's end of day one, we are here at Van Zyl's camp, which is absolutely in the middle of nowhere. We are in Kaukoland in Namibia, which is really one of the most remote parts of the country. And the Defender has been a fantastic companion and I'm looking forward to the next day, which I believe is even more difficult. In fact, today was a bit of a cakewalk, a bit of a warm up for the new Defender. Let's see how it fares on day two and three. Mm -hmm. 
It's an early start for what's going to be a 12-hour day and the morning begins with a drive across flat desert scrub to the foot of Van Zyl's Pass. I've jumped into the P400 and the 3-litre mild hybrid has a nice broad spread of torque and enough low-down pull to yank the heavy defender up a cliff. We reach Van Zyl's and this is where the defender's capabilities will be tested to the max. Built by a Dutchman, Ben Van Zyl, this pass was made by a bunch of locals with their hands using pickaxe and shovels. No earth-moving equipment was used here and it shows. It's one of the most challenging off-road trails in the world and a true test of the defender's capability. Wheel articulation, ground clearance, ramp breakover angles, angles of approach and departure, all of that is absolutely vital here. And the one thing all off-roaders should know is that Van Zyl's doesn't tolerate mistakes. This place is really unforgiving. Get it wrong and that's what happens to you. Thankfully, no such worries for us and I make it to the top unscathed. But more than anything, I'm fully convinced that there's nothing quite like the Defender when it comes to sheer capability. So day two is when it starts getting really interesting. We've been climbing up Van Zyl's Pass and just to give you an idea how difficult it's been, 10 Ks have taken us one and a half hours to do. We've been averaging about six kilometers an hour. And as you can see, it's because it's not really a road, not even a track actually. We are rock climbing. We are having to climb over these sort of jagged rocks. And I think we're using every millimeter of the Land Rover Defender's 291 millimeter ground clearance. It's tradition to sign a stone at the foot of Van Zyl's to say you made it. Yes, your name on that cluster of stones gives you a lot of bragging rights. Back on relatively flat terrain in Marienfluss Valley, I get a chance to play around with the infotainment system. So I've been playing around with the PV Pro or the latest infotainment system of uh, Land Rover, which actually makes its uh, debut here on the all-new Defender. It's got a lot of functions, lots you can play around with. Uh, the camera setup is fantastic and really was super, super useful on the rough stuff over there. Obviously, you've got a lot of uh, functions and uh, the terrain response system very configurable as well and you've got a lot many more options but I must say I do miss the more intuitive feel of a controller knob. We are in the Namibian desert and the scenery is simply magical with the color of sand constantly changing. It's easy to hit speeds of 150 k's on dirt tracks and the stability of the defender in these conditions is pretty amazing. Yes, it shimmies a bit when you suddenly hit a deep patch of sand, but the overall sense of control you get on loose surfaces is just incredible. Switch the traction control off and you can even have a bit of fun sliding in the desert Paris Dhaka style. River crossings, yes, there are plenty of them in Namibia and the Defender coolly hops from riverbank to riverbank. The wildlife is impressed too and must be wondering what this convoy of defenders is doing on their turf. The massive ground clearance played a key role today, so before I sign off, let's have a quick look at how it works. For a car that's designed to jump over rocks, ground clearance is everything. This car sits really high. But to get in, you don't have to be a mountain climber for that. This car drops down to access mode. Makes it easy to get in. 
So you need to take the stairs to get to the roof, but to get to the first floor, it's just the press of a button. Yay! It's like being in an elevator. What an incredible day it's been. Sand, rocks, slush, mud, every kind of treacherous surface except snow. We haven't done that yet, not in Namibia at least. And it's taken us 12 hours to do around 240 Ks. Now that is quite a run and it's been really difficult going, but quite honestly, I've emerged from the Defender pretty fresh and we've come to this fantastic place in this beautiful location, Elephant Lodge, and it's just a perfect end to a fantastic day. So this is Elephant Lodge, a fantastic oasis in the wilds of Namibia and a great place to start day three from. There's more sand than slush today, but the terrain gets more spectacular as we enter the restricted Skeleton Coast region. Now, Land Rover has got special permission for us to drive here. There's no sign of human habitation, just wildlife roaming free. So we're in the heart of the Skeleton Coast of Namibia. This is one of the most hauntingly beautiful places and uh, right now we are driving up the Horusev River, literally going upstream. I'm in low range, sand mode and have put the DSC off because uh, you don't want to get bogged down here by the electronic nannies. <laughs> After three days of driving across the most challenging and spectacular countryside, I've become accustomed to the defender's prowess. Bouts of panic when crossing a river or scrambling up a slippery dune were far and few between. I knew I wouldn't get stuck, I knew the reserve the car had, and I knew it would sail through any terrain effortlessly. And effortlessly is the key word here. That it could tackle the toughest terrain I expected, but it's the ease with which it did that that was truly astonishing. Yes, the most iconic of off-roaders is back, reborn in grand style. 